Hey there guys, how are you? Welcome back to another awesome video and we got ourselves a TV show review and today's TV show review is going to be of The Mandalorian Season 3. So before we get started, spoilers and spoiler warning ahead for both Mandalorian Season 3, Mandalorian Season 2, and The Book of Boba Fett because this obviously is the third season in The Mandalorian. And it picks up with Din Djarin and Grogu back at it, just doing their thing since now Mando, Din Djarin, has Grogu back after him being trained by Luke. And after having the Darksaber as well at the end of the season two finale of The Mandalorian and into the Book of Boba Fett, we do see Mando using or trying to use the Darksaber they're back at it with their pretty much their Mandalorian thing and also trying to help Bo-Katan Kryze reclaim and basically bring back Mandalore and its people. So this show is obviously brought to us again by Dave Filoni and John Favreau. These guys are just fantastic with the show and really know what they're trying to do with it in some ways more than others. And I know that this third season has really been getting some backlash. But before we get into any of that backlash or any issues this season may have, let's just say right off the bat that Pedro Pascal is great as, as Mando, as Din Djarin. And honestly, he could go do whatever, say whatever. And honestly, you can put Mando in any situation or any adventure. I think Pedro would make it awesome. He'd make it somewhat fun. He'd make it somewhat great because we like this character so much and how well we've seen him within just the two seasons, now three. We like Everyone loves and knows this character by now, so it's just no matter what you do with him, you can put him in anything really. So him fighting off like these space pirates in the beginning of the season is actually really fun. I actually do like that because some people didn't like that and some of the other subplots that happened because this season in a way, does try to cram in more of that, like, we're building up that connection and kind of make things more interwoven, in a sense, because season two of Mandalorian kind of gave us a tease of that, well, actually, I should say season one, but more into season two of The Mandalorian, we have seen there has been perhaps a little bit of cloning technology that the Empire's been developing. Maybe that could, what, Maybe that's what's leading or what that led to with Supreme Leader Snoke and the Emperor coming back. That's what they may be perhaps teasing is that it was a clone. Things that they're trying to make up for with this sequel trilogy and tie things to the Clone Wars and tie things to the TV shows. And the TV shows do that great. And the Clone Wars did that successfully and fantastically. And this show is trying to do that as well. And I think it does a good job of it. I still don't really like what the sequel trilogy did with some things, but at least it's acknowledging that, hey, we're trying to make up some sort of connective tissue. And it, I don't mind it, honestly. And then the, trying to bring in Grand Admiral Thrawn, which was awesome because we got that teased in Mando Season 2. We got that teased here as well, that he's making a big uprising and that we're going to see him later on in the Ahsoka series, which I am so stoked for. Everything else I think feels great. The rest of the ensemble and the rest of the episodes I think feel fine. They feel great. And I know that there is that issue that everyone has with that one episode with Jack Black and Lizzo. I really don't have a huge problem with it. I thought it was just like a nice fun adventure. It was kind of cool. I think it was kind of funny and hilarious to see both of these two in a Star Wars property and have Christopher Lloyd guest star in there as well. I have no real huge issue with that episode. I know some people are kind of like, really, you're putting Jack Black and Lizzo? But it's like, like we've, we've had worse and we've had, we've had better and we've had worse guest stars within the Star Wars universe. So I don't complain. This season tries to explain of what kind of went down at the end of season two with the Darksaber and with Bo-Katan and with Din keeping the Darksaber and Bo-Katan kind of going into exile ashamed of herself because she doesn't have her crowned prize weapon that makes her like the true head or the true like ruler of Mandalore, she does regain it and we do see an arc for her to be able to have that back and Katie Sokoff does great with it because she has been playing this character since Clone Wars and now she's able to play this character in live action form of course and she does great with it. They do establish that she is that middle ground of that she can take off her helmet but also not take off her helmet so she can bring both clans of Mandalore together because there's two clans of Mandalore. The ones that still keep their helmets on and the ones that 
remove the helmet and then trying to bring that piece together and just bring back Mandalore and bring back that entire society together and be at peace for once. And then she does a good, she is a good symbol for that. It does take a little while, but we do get this anticipation and hype that Gina Carlo Esposito comes back as Moff Gideon. He's got this sleek, sweet new armor, Mandalorian armor ready to just destroy and take out all the Mandalorians and of course get his revenge on Din Djarin. And you can just tell that Gina Carlo Esposito is just having a great time with his, with his villain. I mean, who wouldn't have a great time playing a villain? Everything else is great. I think the supporting cast is great. Ensembles are great. Action is great. Story is good. The only thing I can maybe kind of take away from this is two things, perhaps. Maybe one or two things. Is that although it does make sense for Mando to kind of be sort of sidelined, at the same time, it feels like... It feels weird that a, there's like an episode or two or at a certain point, it feels like it becomes more Bo, Katan, Kreese, front and center. And then Mando's right here, like as as like maybe like next to her. I do get that because she has to be the symbol to bring all of Mandalore together and she needs to be a leader. She needs to restore Mandalore and be that rightful person. And she's got this supposed prophecy that she saw the Mythosaur, which is the creature of that skull logo that we see with, that's associated with Mandalore. It's called a Mythosaur. So I think that is, it, it does make sense, but it does feel weird that Din kind of takes a backseat with some things because this is the Mandalorian. And we've kind of associated with this show with Din and Grogu doing, whether it's like small little space adventures or this big, like grand scheme. And it's funny that I say that because my other thing that I have with the show, or at least with this season, is that it feels like, yes, it's got that small band of cast members that it wants to mainly heavily focus on, like with not only our main two leads, but also you have the Armorist and you have Paz Vizsla, who's kind of more got a bigger role in this season and some other characters that do show up. But I noticed there's some other Mandalorians in the background. Like, yes, they're meant to be extras, but by God, I kind of want to know about who these guys are. Like, all these other colored Mandalorians. Like, there's one with a green and white helmet. There's all these colored helmeted dudes. And I'm kind of like, I kind of want to know a little bit about these guys. Like, nothing against the main core, but it'd be nice to have some new faces a little bit. <laughs> Even though I do say that I want more of Din in the focus rather than other people overshadowing him. But... It, it, it's it's a weird thing for me to say, but hopefully it does make sense. Like, I, I don't know. I, I hope it makes sense somewhat. And the other thing that I kind of do remember, which I hopefully do hope that they do do something with this, is that there's an episode that happens that has nothing to do with Mandalorian at all. Well, actually, there's two episodes. There's one that involves, like, the First Order and then the New Republic, kind of, where they, did, where they have established themselves in society. And there's another like episode, I think it's like a flashback or another episode with a Jedi, I forgot his name is, but Ahmed Best gets to play a Jedi. He was Jar Jar Binks in the prequels. And at least he gets a better character, which is great for him because I, like nothing against the actor, but I just can't stand Jar Jar with a passion. So it's good that he gets to have a better role than just that one shitty character. So... But other than that, that was, I think that was a flashback or that was an episode, but that was cool. But the other thing is that there's this episode involving like nothing with Mandalorians. It has something to do with the First Order and the New Republic, where they establish. It follows one of the scientists from the first season we saw in Mandalorian and him kind of learning what the New Republic's up to because the New Republic's trying to do things and he introduces cloning technology and... The New Republic is kind of looking at him like we shouldn't allow cloning technologies because it has the Empire written all over it because the Empire used this technology and you used Empire-related, First Order-related equipment and we can't have that. And there's this whole episode that's like a side thing going on, a side plot, subplot, which it's intriguing, it's interesting because there's like some like maybe shade that made the New Republic's kind of like... They don't want to interfere at first and they don't want anything to happen. And it kind of does make sense going forward because if, since the New Republic doesn't do anything about the First Order, the First Order eventually rises and grows to what it becomes in the sequel trilogy, forcing 
the resistance to form and rise from the ashes and become the new rebellion because the new republic's not doing shit about the first order so it's up to the resistance to do something about the first order it kind of just feels weird because it was trying to build up something and i thought it would have paid off in towards the end of the season but it doesn't maybe it will in season four because most likely we're gonna get a season four or there's that whole thing that we're gonna get another Star Wars movie with Mandalorian showing up or whatever is gonna happen, but hopefully it's all gonna be all good stuff. It's just small little minor things that I feel I was I was I was very happy with this season, but there was definitely some small minor things that maybe they didn't clearly fix or they didn't really tweak too much. But I still think season two is a little bit better, although season three I do like, but season two I think is still is the best for me. But nonetheless, I will still say that on a scale of 1 to 10, I will give season 3, I'll at least give it like maybe a 9 out of 10, maybe an 8 out of 10. But season 3 of Mandalorian, have you guys seen it? What did you think of it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please smash the like button. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I do awesome videos every day of the week. Make sure you ring that bell to new videos every day of the week. Share the video favorites, all the good stuff and more. Leave some suggestions in the comment section. You name it, I'll look into it as best as possible. I have other reviews, other top 10s to be going through and looking at and other videos hopefully towards the summer we will be doing. There's that Q&A video and a few requests I have for you guys and a plethora of other things that I have in mind that we will get to as the summer goes and as this year goes by. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.